sweets a second time. Today is the bittersweet day where we say goodbye to the Subaru. We tear out all of its So, you heat. What? I just turned you down. Now you have to wait another freaking. Oh, that's quick. <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> Today is the day where we say goodbye to the Subaru and tear out everything inside to put into the Rail Miata. It's a bittersweet day. Obviously, we bought this thing for 600 bucks. We rebuilt the engine, we had some fun with it, but I've been saying it ever since I bought this thing. The only purpose of this car is to be a donor. So that's what we're doing today. Instead of what we did with the Rail Miata, where we pulled out the engine and trans from the top, and kept all the uh, suspension and the wheels and all that. We are going to unbolt everything, so the subframes, the trans, the, the diffs, everything from the bottom and hopefully just lift the body off of it. That's, that's the idea. And then after that, we're gonna build some jigs off of the Subaru chassis to begin work on the tube chassis on the Realm Yacht. I know a lot of you guys are sad about seeing this thing go, want me to drift it or make it a sleeper or do all these things or put the Miata engine in it. This Subaru has lots of miles. The chassis is kind of rusty. Its time has ended. Oh, but wait, I am gonna be selling everything off of it, so if you want something, hit me up. I don't know why I'm still talking. Without any further ado, we're gonna get, um, be, we're gonna start, yeah, get that out of there. But first, I want to thank this build's sponsor, carmarshall.com. Carmarshall.com can help you guys save thousands of dollars on new or used vehicles. So if you're looking to purchase a vehicle, check them out. So right now the Subaru is, well, at least was, the only running driving car I have at the shop. I mean, that's not true. The truck drives and runs, the, you know, Molly drives and runs. But the Subaru was the only one that was insured and registered and all that. And uh, it's all torn apart now. My new dailies back to the apartment. I kind of didn't think about that. And I haven't eaten at all today and it's four. Uh, so you know, I got some DoorDash, boy. Noodles and company, heck yeah. This is disconnected, the clutch is disconnected, the brakes are disconnected. This is not. Oh, uh, nope, uh-uh. What? I don't think the engine is moving down. No, it... He like went up with the car. Did it? This part... Bing, bada boom. We've got the entire front drivetrain, engine, trans, all of it out of the Subaru, all in one piece. That's sweet. We're gonna put some wheels on it and then do the wheel dollies and uh, yeah, hopefully it all works well.
We're yeah. just talking about Christmas and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Are you excited? Yeah, dude. Okay. Can I, can I have it? We gotta get it off. There you go. Dude, oh my god, a shiny knot, <laughs> dude. Thanks, man. You're welcome. I'll keep it. You should appreciate my nut. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, we have a completely bare Subaru shell, ready and ripe to make a jig out of. So that's what we're gonna do next. Having the entire drivetrain of a car out like this is pretty freaking cool. I mean, we have the entire rear subframe suspension drivetrain and the entire front subframe suspension and drivetrain. Nebe, nebe. So this jig we are about to build is going to locate the mounting points for the front subframe, the lower control arm, and the struts, which is the entire front engine and drivetrain. And then we'll use that jig to build the two front ends. So that's that's the goal. Now we have to be really, really precise with this jig. If it's even a little bit off, that will throw off the entire suspension geometry. So, I got a drill press. And what this drill press is going to do is allow us to drill precise holes. Using a drill works, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's really hard to get the holes exactly, you know, to the millimeter where you want it. Even with a, uh, a center punch and stuff, a drill press is just more precise. We got this thing, it's just a master force drill press, nothing special, but it does have lights, which is pretty cool, and laser. You see the lasers? Yeah. You know, you turn this and this will lower the bits. This adjusts speed on the go, RPM gauge. It's gonna be pretty cool. And with this bad boy, which I think is called a micrometer, we should be able to build very precise things. So without any further ado, let's get to work. So the jig is all done. I went ahead and welded the top and I added some supports right there. So it's all good. I fit it up to the uh, chassis again, make sure everything still lines up and it does indeed. This is gonna make this possible.
thousand pounds my ass. The uh, thousand pound dollies could not hold like 500 pounds each. Wah wah. Moving the Subaru on the dollies was the worst decision ever. Thousand pounds? No, no, no. The dolly under the engine is even already starting to break, which is really sketchy. So we'll we'll get some new dollies in the next episode and uh, make sure nothing falls off. But that is it for this video. We have the entire front drivetrain out over there, the entire rear drivetrain out over here, ready to go into the Miata. And wait for it. We have a front jig to help us turn a two-wheel drive Miata into a four-wheel drive one. I'll drive one. Anyway, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, please give it a like. If you didn't, please give it a dislike. Yeah, it was uh, maybe not as fun as building the cage, but we got it all out and it's all done. Yet again, a huge thanks to you guys and to all my sponsors for making this possible. Shout out to Marshall Motorsports for you know helping build the engine. Shout out to the HTP welder again and all the patrons. Thank you guys so much. I'm really excited to get started on the tube chassis with this thing. In fact, in the next video, you're going to see this.